It's another time that we meet. Uh, we are continuing with the syllabus uh, in Christian education, and uh, the Christian educator today is looking at the subject of uh, justice. The Christian educator today is looking at the subject of uh, uh, justice, and uh, uh, there is no other uh, most revealing. Uh, place in the Bible upon this subject than uh, the book of uh, Luke chapter 18 and so I want us to look at it Christian educator and the subject of uh, uh, justice Christian educator and the subject of uh, justice and so let us go to the book of uh, Luke the book of Luke the book of Luke what chapter are we looking at? Chapter 18. What is the subject? Justice. It's good always to know that. Uh, uh, and uh, I have found out that uh, it's always good to know if uh, the child is actually with you or the child is not with you. But it should not be a someone when a, a Christian educator is handling the subject, there should be always an interaction between uh, the Christian educator and uh, <coughs> the child. As a parent and uh, as a person who is charge of the children, you should always communicate. You should always have conversation. You should not assume a role of only passing information, but um, the child always you should engage the child to uh, respond. That is how actually the brains get the things and the child grows. So let us look at the book of Luke chapter 18. The book of Luke chapter 18. Uh, and he did what? He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men always, always, yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm a Christian educator and you are a child, okay? So I want us to have a conversation and the subject is justice and we have to engage each other so that your mind may be active on it and it may imprint what you are talking about. And he spake up, and this is the uh, one way, when you're dealing with the Bible, uh, as a Christian educator, as a Christian educator, when, when you are dealing with the Bible as your lesson book uh, or, your, or your textbook, I mean, uh, the Bible as a textbook, you should not always be in a habit of reading it. The child, uh, the child should be engaged also in reading it so that uh, he may or she may capture the words and then... Uh, uh, the words may be stored in the mind, and so uh, it's good for you to read together. It is one way of helping the child to know how to read. So let us again try. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, huh? that men ought always to pray and not faint. And so we are looking at the theme of justice, but what is the most important aspect of justice as the parable begins? What do you understand as a child? What is the main thing? We are looking at justice and you understand that uh, 
as a big channel you, you i know you have gone to through look chapter 18 is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, uh as you go through look chapter 18 you understand it is the the judge and the widow is it and uh, but the first statement where is the weight as we even are looking at the aspect of justice as a christian educator and as a child who is in school it's a it's an open book test and this is how you know that the child is understanding the story that you are doing i'm asking what where is the weight we are looking at justice is it but as the parable begin where is the weight of this thing in verse 1 it is an open book test you can look at it what is the weight of everything the, the question is hard yeah the question is not understandable i'll try it again and this is how children learn <laughs> so the christian educator wants to teach about justice is it and it is embedded in a parable is it and the parable begins the weight of the parable it is or the weight of the lesson it is the beginning and the end what will be said in between the weight should be looked at the beginning and the end that is what we call a chiasm so while the parable is beginning what is the weight of the subject in the first sentence because the first sentence gives you the weight of what you are going to speak about what is the main important thing? As even you are going to look to justice, what is the important thing that begins the whole thing, the whole parable? Men all, always ought to pray. That is the thing. <laughs> you are struggling. You know you are not a child. You, you have become a big person, that's why you are struggling. But a child will just look at it and tell you this is the thing. The weight is, he taught them a parable to this end. Are you seeing this? That to this end, to this end, what does it mean? Of all things, huh? the reason why he is teaching this parable, the reason why we are looking at this justice, it is this, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not, not faint. Verse 2. The, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And so what does the judges have to do? In normal circumstance, what are judges employed to participate in? Judge the people. Give me a good word that I'm looking for. To give justice. That is the main point of judges. So here we have and the, the, the child should be taught to understand that uh, and look at this saying that it's as in a city a judge which feared not god neither regarded what does that mean as as a child what do you understand with that and i don't want you to think a lot i just want you to be a child and think about it a little as a little kid The child will say, Mommy, this is not a good judge. Is it? Yeah, because the judge doesn't regard, that doesn't fear God. And, and you know you are handling Christian education, is it? And so you are telling the child, <laughs> there is in a city uh, uh, which feared not God, neither regarded them. So, Sister Louise, this judge doesn't fear God. He's not a good judge. You, you know, that is how Sister Louise used to teach the children, or you have forgotten the lesson. <laughs> it was so interesting with Sister Louise. And so when she was handling the children at uh, Battle Creek. And so the, the child will automatically tell you when she reads the statement, if, if you have taught the child to respond and to understand the verses as she reads the Bibles, when you give an open book test, the child, the child will look at the verse and tell you, Mommy, this is not a good judge. And remember, we are talking about justice. Eh? And you tell, you tell, what will you tell the, the child now at this point? 
you ask a question and the child responds like that like you are asking a question uh, about verse 2 of Luke chapter 18 saying there was in a seat a judge which feared not God neither regarded man and you ask the child child what do you see in the verse and the child tells you mommy this is not a good judge now this is the point that you bring in the good and evil is it yeah that in the world there exists what good and evil and that's why we are learning about what justice at the end of the day is it it is good also uh it's not good to cluster many subjects but uh, it is good to touch some important points when you are doing christian education and all these characters like here we have in at the end of it you will find that it is also an investigate investigative judgment here that uh, justice is delayed because more evidence is being gathered okay yeah o because of, uh, of everything in every case uh because you cannot just go in a court and you say that you are this this guy is a thief and the judge says that put that guy to gallows let him be executed what does the judge do he looks for witnesses he gathers witnesses he gathers for evidence and so the child in Christian education, when he's being told, taught about justice, he should be taught about good and evil and not just rashly uh, doing a judgment or reaching at a conclusion without gathering every evidence that has to be gathered. Even a Christian educator, uh, you, you are teaching children and maybe you go outside the class and you come back to the class and one child says that this child has done this, this child has done this. They need justice, is it? But do, do you go ahead executing, uh, having an executive judgment? No, 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 no. You, you have to ask other children, what happened? How did this thing be? How did this come to do this and this? And after this, then you can have uh, a good uh, judgment. Verse 3, and there was what? A widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversaries. So the child is being taught about justice. And uh, here we have a judge who doesn't fear God. And here we have a widow. And somebody, something has been taken from the widow. And she has gone to this judge. Avenge me of my adversaries. And so the child will meet many difficulties in life. And the child will seek justice. But how does the child respond to the adversaries? Does the child go about avenging? At this point, what will you tell the child as a Christian educator? And you are teaching about justice. We don't have to avenge by our own. I see you are now a good child. You are becoming a good child and a Christian educator. So uh, avenging is not of us, is it? Because you see this widow has been wrong. The child can be wrong, but he doesn't have to avenge. There is somebody who can avenge that, is it? So verse, uh, verse 4, and he will not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man. And so here we have a good judge, a, an evil judge with a woman who has been robbed everything, and he will not, the judge will not avenge for this widow for a while. And remember, you are teaching Christian characters as a Christian educator to a child. So there are so many things involved in the verse. And he will not for a while. What will you tell the child? Never give up, I want. Uh, never give up in seeking for something. Uh, give me one word for that as one of the Christian characters that we have learned, patience. So you are seeing that you are combining these characters now, and the child is seeing how you are plotting uh, uh, you, you, your whole thing. You are putting down the pieces together. You have learned about patience, and also in justice, patience now comes in, that the child have to wait. As a Christian educator also, you have to be patient, while actually God 
or the judge is looking in your cases. And so it builds upon another. Each Christian character builds upon each other. And no wonder we are told that the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit. You see that? It is a fruit, which means that if you slice one part and remove it, does it still remain a fruit? No, it's not a complete fruit. So it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of Holy Spirit is encompassed all this. And if you remove one, then you don't have the fruit. And so the child can see now how you are building together, how you are putting together the, the puzzle until it fits to a complete uh, uh, Christian uh, character. And so here we have patience, verse, uh, verse 5. And remember we are talking about justice and we are talking about the things that encompasses justice. Verse 5. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I'll avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. So, you see, this judge is only responding because the widow will weary her. And you have the, taught the child that there is evil and there is good. And as a Christian child, she should be able to understand why things are done. And we shouldn't do things because we are worried of them. Are you seeing that? We shouldn't be doing things because we are worried of them. But we should be doing things because they are right. And now you are contrasting between the judge who is a heathen and God. God doesn't do things because he is worried of them. He does things because they are right. But this judge is doing things because he was worried with them. So he is not, he, although he seems to be doing a right thing, but per se it's not, a, 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 he is the motivation of doing them is not the right thing motivation are you seeing that and god judges the motives do you know that we can do things which are good do we have people who are helping other people do we have orphanages but why are they doing this are they doing it for the glory of god or for the glory of themselves the motive behind what you are doing is more important than what you are doing or equally important as you are doing and the lord said here what they just and just judge said this is verse 6 verse 7 verse 5 yes <coughs> yet because the we the widow what yes because he is unjust, he doesn't, he, he is a heathen, he doesn't uh, understand what actually it means uh, uh, to, to, to give out somebody what belongs to, to him or to her. Continually going to him. <laughs> yeah, he, he, she was wearing her. Sorry, she, she was wearing her. Uh, and that's why we, we said persistence. Eh? Persistence, is it? Persist, pers yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Patience is waiting. Yeah, we, we looked at it. And persistence is going for it. Is it? Uh, continually. And you know, Christ says that pray unceasing, is it? And he says, seek. What does it mean to seek? Seek is not just going once and knocking. No, you you knock continually. Yeah? And so, uh, pray without ceasing. This is persistence. And so, this, this widow is not giving up on her situation. Say that you are having sin, a sin problem, is it? You don't just stay that, uh, now I have prayed, Lord, give me victory over this sin. You seek it consistently, okay? After praying that God help me to overcome this, you don't sit, you go about. How, how do you go about persisting to be forgiven by continuing in good? Is it? Yes, this is how to overcome this sin. We are told that overcome evil by doing good. This is the persistence in actually seeking forgiveness. And so, I'm sorry. 
the circle coming in pattern it's okay we shall handle it yet <clears throat> because this widow troubled me i'll venture we were in verse um, and the lord said hear what the unjust judge said and shall not god do what we are in verse 7 and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? And so God, in his justice, the child should be taught that God at last is the avenger of everything. And on earth, you may not get every justice that you seek for, but you should not avenge. Avenging belongs to God. And God is the just judge of everything, and he will give justice. And so I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find what? Faith on the earth. That is how the parable ends. And it's about justice. And in this justice, justice in it carries what? Patience, persistence, prayer and faith and so you find that in this one character you find that all the other characters other characters are fitting in to complete the puzzle of justice that justice is not just about somebody saying something and you reacting on it like somebody say reporting that this is bad and you acting upon it speedily upon it no there, there are things that should be considered in justice prayer patience persistence and uh, then faith they have to be considered while you are making uh, hmm? uh, patience patience is waiting is it L long suffering uh, although it is a sister, it's a sister to patience because long suffering is a, a this enduring of this thing. Patience is the waiting part of it, but long suffering is the enduring part of it. And so they, they like they are like they are tied. Long suffering and patience, you suffer long, hmm? you endure. Patience, you wait. You are waiting while you are long suffering. You see that. Yeah, they, they, they are words that are, are almost the same. They are married together. They are sister to each other. They go hand in hand. In, in patience, you can you know that every time somebody exercises patience, it is about waiting for something good to come out of the situation. Is it? And so in the long in the patient, there is this what we call long suffering. So I think they are sister words. And uh, I, don't, I, I look at the syllabus if we have long suffering. Uh, I know if uh, I don't touch on it, some other brethren will be able to touch on it. So uh, today we are looking at um, we were looking at justice and what it encompasses. And as a Christian educator, how you can pass this to a child. In it, they are en encompassed some other lessons that go hand in hand with uh, 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 with justice. And so. Um, the child should be known, made to know that um, uh, when it comes to justice, some other things apply. Some other characters have also to apply to it. And, uh, and uh, we know that uh, we have to exercise faith. And what is faith? <laughs> Believing what the word of God has said that it will do, is it? Yes, that is faith. And faith comes by what? Hearing and by hearing what? The word of God. And so the child should be taught that in all this, what he is cultivating justice should be according to faith and prayer. And these all are actually embedded in the word of God. So unless the child makes the word of God the supreme rule of his life, he will never have a good justice. He will never have a good judgment of the things. And so uh, the gospel is a simplifier of all world's problem. You see that? Because in it, we find every trait, every Christian character. The child should be taught to grow mentally, physically, and uh, uh, what spiritually. All should go together. As he grows spiritually, physically, 
uh, spiritually and mentally, this is the true education that the child should be given, and he should not act as the judges of the world, which does things because they are worried of something. He should do it because this is the right thing, and the motive which is being done uh, uh, with it is uh, the right thing. And so that is what I can tell a Christian educator to consider while teaching uh, justice in the book of Luke chapter 18. And uh, God will want us to practice this. And uh, the child will test you. And the devil is a, a cunning in some way. He, he will want to see if you implement this thing. You teach the child and the, 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 the child collides with another child and uh, they come seeking justice and they, they look at how you handle the matter as a judge. And they will be able to put you either in the seat of the hidden judge or God to know which way that you are acting in. And so while we are teaching these Christian characters as Christian educators, we should be careful that we don't teach something and we practice another thing. Because the child, even as you teach the child, he, he will copy what actually your character is. And so as Christian educators and a people who are in this world and uh, going deeply in the parable, the widow is the church. The woman represents what? The church. And uh, this is the church that everything has been taken from them. Do you know which period is this? Yeah. Yeah? This church is in the one in Luke chapter 18. The widow. <laughs> the time when every earthly support will be cut off and everything there is no buying and selling everything is taken from they, they they are like a widow this is a church that everything has been taken from them and the adversary in this plot is Satan himself when he will manifest himself as the angel of light to in to, to give out Sunday law and there's no buying and selling everything is taken from the church they will only subsist on faith and prayer and you know what this is the patience of what this is they that and have what so when the son of man comes this is the second coming this is not the first coming will he find what faith this is the question that is asked the widow in Luke chapter 18, when when everything shall be taken away and there is even no intercessor in the most holy place, will God find a people who have faith upon the earth? Will this child understand these things? When everything in the family is not working, when there, there seems that there is nothing to subsist on in the family, can the, can the child endure? Can she or he have faith? And so as a Christian educator, as you apply the basic lesson, also there are deeper lessons that as the brain of this child develops, you must also introduce. And so the church in Luke chapter 18 is the church that everything has been cut off. The devil has boasted that because of the want of food and clothing, the whole world will be what? Will be mine. But God says that continue in prayers, a little and I'll give you justice. And what is the outcome of, of, of justice? Uh, 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 like at the end, as we wait for justice, something happens. Uh, this is uh, verses. Uh, the Lord will avenge his own elect. And uh, at the end, of judgment everything will be okay everything will be so good so although justice be delayed upon this earth but no eye has seen no ear has heard what the lord has done what prepared for those who love him yes and so the child should be taught even though the justice delays at the end of it the good lord will ever bring out something out of it. And so the child is taught to be patient. That is what uh, I can share 
on the lesson of patience. If uh, you have any question, you can ask as we close.